Now we're going to pick up where we just left off a few minutes ago at the break. We're doing two sessions tonight instead of a one just because the story so flows together and I just feel to continue with that. So here we are on, on May 7th, 1983. Again, we have a, a, young, a, 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 a young church in the sense it's only a few months old, December to May, and it's mostly young adults. So we're at May 7th. 1983, 700 show up the first night. And I, I'm amazed. I, and then we have the newspaper article, the, uh, several of them. Uh, Comet comes. I just read the, uh, in the last session how the Harvard and the Smithsonian uh, Center for uh, Astrophysics wrote this article from the Science Journal or whatever magazine. I don't, I don't mean the Science Journal, whatever magazine it is, called a May's Surprise Comet. And it's uh, a comet that has come closest to the Earth since 1770, and it surprised the, the uh, scientific community worldwide. And of course, uh, Bob said, of course it did. He goes, the point of it is, is to be a sign. He goes, this is Acts 2.19. He goes, the prophetic word came, gather, and it will impact the Earth. Just, you know, that's... That wasn't the exact words of the prophetic vision. That's the essence of it. Gather fast and pray. It matters to what God's doing in the globe. That was really the essence. So we start off strong. I mean, we are really going for it. That first night was so exciting. Well, we go 6 in the, in the morning till 12 at night, <clears throat> 18 hours a day. And, and uh, most of the nights, you know, there's... Five, six, seven hundred at it. Most of the days, there's a bunch in the morning and pretty thin in the afternoons, maybe a hundred, whatever. But it goes all day long, and people come from everywhere, and and it's very, it's an outstanding thing, and we're excited. <clears throat> we're basing it on Joel two fifteen and Daniel nine. Now, there's uh, a number of very significant things that happen in this twenty one day, twenty one days. Now, I wanted, I signed up so that revival would break out at the end of it. And I, I want to be honest with you, I believed it would. Matter of fact, on, the, on May 27th, on May 27th, because it, the, the, the period was May 7th to May 28th, but on, on a Friday night, on May 27th, Bob Jones got up and said, thus is the Lord, there is no revival coming in the near future, in essence. I mean, that wasn't his words. Uh, oh, it was incredibly depressing. Incredibly. Well, we'll get to that. But I'm just being honest. I was sure this saying, this was that which was spoken of. What, meaning the end time revival had started. But what, in retrospect, now it's 20 years later nearly. And uh, we received five significant pieces of divine information that will form our entire future. That have for near 20 years and will continue to. And so when it's all said and done, the Lord may say, you know, when I meet him, face to face in the eternal city one day say well mike i gave you five very dynamic pieces of information now that you've got my point of view it's now it's all over it changed everything what would have been better a uh, short term revival or me to lay the tracks for something that would have longevity in it with clarity and so even at the 20 year mark i go lord i'm really really seeing this different that was brilliant that was really brilliant and it gives you a little bit of wisdom, I mean, a little bit of a, a perspective that when the Lord gives the disappointing answer, it's always rooted in goodness and kindness in his heart. And he's always saying something like, just give it a little bit of time and you might agree with this, what I'm doing right now. Just give it a little bit of time. Okay, first word he gave, and I'm not going to develop each one of these words right now. I want to probably develop them in themes throughout this, these 12 sessions. The first word he gave was uh, the Psalm 27, I mean, Psalms 27, verse 4. This one thing I've sought. How's it go? <laughs> one thing do I desire all the days of my life to behold His beauty. I got, I'm at that slow start again. I'm going to get revved up in a second here. <laughs> the adrenaline kind of... So I'll be there in a minute. Okay. Psalm 27, verse 4 was the... Uh, was, was, was the, the thing. And, <laughs> and the Lord spoke audibly and said a 24-hour prayer in the spirit of the tabernacle of David. I might come back to that one. The second thing that he gave, very powerful, five very, very important things. 
Uh, the second one is, he said, uh, there's coming a time, in essence, I mean, this isn't a quote, but this is the meaning of it, and I'll get, come back to it in greater detail later in, in this, either tonight or the 12, uh, the 12 session thing that we're doing. Uh, 5,000, 5,000 would come. You would grow from 500 to 5,000 overnight. And I don't know what overnight means. It could be a year, it could be a literal 24 hour period, or it could be like a year to grow 5,000. Uh, on the on the IHOP staff, that's what I'm, we're talking about. Five thousand overnight. Number three, the Lord spoke the the very important one, which we'll probably maybe spend thirty minutes on this. The thing of healing. No no disease known to man would stand before this people. Meaning this prayer movement. No disease known to man would stand before these people of fasting and prayer. Is what we're talking about. Uh, from Psalm 28. I know that doesn't seem to connect, but that it was absolutely stunning. Uh, the next thing that, that happened that uh, I've not really celebrated, although Bob said it on a number of t- uh, times, and he talked about it again, because I'm feeling to, we're in the hour now, and it's time to get understanding and go forward with it, uh, the hour of the Midwest, because the Lord is uh, uh, wanting us to really focus in a very intentional way on building a prayer furnace, a prophetic profession, uh, Prophetic and intercession, intercession prophetic with the healing dynamic, the fasting teams, the the feeding the poor, the healing rooms, reality. I'm talking about the reality and uh, the the 24-7, the fasting teams, 365, and a handful of things in in, in 10 or 12 key regions in the Midwest. And the Lord has given some profound information on this that I've never even shared with the staff, a little bit with the leadership. Uh, the Lord wants us to uh, rally together Joel 2 people in all the regions in the Midwest that have the Anna calling, the prophetic calling. And the Lord wants to do more than build these 10 or 12 regions in the Midwest that this angel talked about, this 500 mile radius. He wants us to flow together and build each other and to have a prayer furnace in the Midwest that is reaching out, not just to Israel, but profoundly focused on a birthing of a spirit of revival in the Church of Israel, a supernatural breakthrough, and uh, a becoming a preemptive strike from the Midwest for this uh, horrendous evil that's going to rise out of Russian Europe, and uh, with uh, prophets in place and connected, and a whole there's just a whole lot going on that I'll tell you la- later. But it was it was right there at the end of May. I remember when the meetings Bob came up. And he talked about it, and he said, this thing in the Midwest is going to explode. And he said, God is going to make Kansas City and St. Louis partners in the Spirit. He's going to make them partners in the Holy Spirit. They're going to birth it together because there's a twin birthing that's going to happen. And it will make sense in the years to come. And, I, and, I, and I've never given too many words on this uh, publicly because I've only, only, as a rule, have taken two or three sessions to tell this whole history. That I'm taking 12 hours. I only took three hours. But I have 10 or 15 words about this over the years that are astounding. And now the Lord has told me in this 50-day uh, uh, period of seeking the Lord, He said, uh, this is that. Now begin for breakthrough, breakthrough in the Midwest. It's time, 2003, 2004. And uh, it, we're going to build uh, under the leadership of the Holy Spirit and the grace of God with many, many things. Not an organization, but we're going to contribute. We don't want an organization at all. You can't, they can't be a part of an organization. I have no interest in that. It's organic, it's relational, and it's all of us together working hard to build prayer furnaces in every one of the major regions in the Midwest area. And the prophecy teams, every single region will be covered. 365, the prophets will go back and forth. The, uh, uh, the Joseph company coming forth. And the Lord saying to me very clear, now's the time. Start building it. This is preemptive. Get these, this thing moving together. But it was on that, it was during that, Bob got up on the microphone and declared this. He declared about uh, Kansas City, St. Louis. And I'm going to get a, I don't think I'll really tell this story. So I think this is a good time for maybe a, 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 a little a parenthesis here. But this is May 83. Now it's May 85. I'm on a parenthesis. May 85. Now, those of you that are like exceptionally intelligent, you're just going to have to put your seatbelt on right now because this is really going to put you on tilt. But it's true. It happened. And it happened with, with, with a thousand witnesses. It happened. In May 1985, two years after the solemn assembly, again, I'm on a parenthesis, Bob Jones got up and he said, I have the word of the Lord. He goes, he looked at me, he says, you're going to get into unbelief when I tell you this. 
which was his way of saying, I'll be skeptical. I didn't appreciate it because he said it on a microphone. But it's when he says it on a microphone, and then I'm kind of responsible together with him. But I did this on a microphone. He goes, the God, he says, the Holy Spirit is going to create worldwide attention to be focused on Kansas City. He says, well, that is the good news. He goes, here's the bad news. The Lord's going to do it through the baseball game. I said, the baseball game? He says, yeah, he's going to do it through the baseball game. I go, I don't, I, I don't, I can't, I don't understand what you're talking about. He says, through the professional baseball. I go, oh, he said this publicly. I mean, I just said, oh, Bob, this is so juvenile. I mean, this is, this is, this is juvenile. And they, and they get in the World Series and the playoffs, they're down three games to one. So they're going to get eliminated. Bob said, I guarantee you. He goes, I don't care about baseball, but I guarantee you they're going to win the next three. And they do. And then they're down three games to one in the World Series. He said, I guarantee you're going to win. they're going to go all four again. I said, I don't think so. And they did it. And they made a big point, the first time in history that ever happened. And uh, he said, the message that God's going to trumpet, he says, it looks like Kansas City is down and out and will never make it. And suddenly, at 5 till 12, the Lord brings the victory in. He goes, that's the spiritual message over this movement breaking forth in this city. He says, when it looks like it's 5 till 12 and Kansas City is counted out, he's saying this in May. He says, suddenly at 5 till 12, the Lord's breaking in victory. So we were down three games to one. We won three in a row. I went, well, we're down three to one. We win three in a row. Now here's, that's pretty startling, but that's like, so what? I'm not that impressed yet. We got a leadership meeting of about three or 400 meetings on Saturday morning. I mean, this was really wild. Bob says, well. They're all together, and we're, we're talking about the church. And he says, I heard it. He says, I heard it out loud. I heard it in my dream. I heard the voice of the Lord. It spoke resounding. He goes, I heard it very clear. The Lord said, 11 is the number because it's 11-hour victory. It's 11th-hour victory he's going to give Kansas City. I said, 11 what? He goes, I don't know. And the next day, we win 11 to nothing. And he told everybody this, that it was going to happen. And I think it's USA Today. It says, uh, but, you know, we, I, I made a whole bunch of different papers. But uh, it says, Miracle World Series. The Monday after, it says, it says, starts off one of these articles. Where is Kansas City? Who knows where Kansas City is? He goes, the drama and the intrigue of this World Series has forced the people's of the East and West Coast and all around the nations to get out their atlas and find out where Kansas City is. And we had to look and search, and we found Kansas City finally because of the drama of the baseball league. He says, and the, and the headline says, Miracle World Series. Miracle World, World Series. They call it the I-70 World Series. Miracle World Series. And it says, and who would have thought we counted them out, and somehow they continued to come back. And Bob says, I'm telling you, the Lord told me in front of all of you on May 1985, it's going to be an 11th hour victory. Uh, you know, he, he, he would use that terminology, 11th hour victory, 5 till 12, final minute. It looks like Kansas City's counted out. He goes, you're going to be counted out many times by many people. And at 5 till 12, at the 11th hour, the Lord's going to break through, and this prayer movement is going to succeed, and it's going to get the attention of the entire earth. He says, this is going to happen. He goes, you wait and watch the baseball league. And he spoke, I, I'm going to give you the five words again, the 24-7 house of prayer. He spoke about the 5,000 growth, the no disease, no demand, the St. Louis partnership and God's attention focused on the Midwest to impact the whole world together in partnership. And then uh, the timing of it would be sovereignly set up by God and he would display that through a drought. Uh, what's happening is that it's one of the days uh, in this 21 day fast maybe it's it's day 10 you know i don't know it's it's early on i remember that may day 7 8 10 and and i'm walking back and forth and i have this word in me psalm 27 4 and it's so alive in me and it's devotional this one thing i desire all the days of my life to seek the beauty of the lord all the days of my life and and i asked the people to pray on the microphone revival prayers and this was devotional, so I didn't pray on the mic. And I remember 6 in the morning till midnight. We were there, you know, whole company, 18 hours a day. I mean, it was long, hard days. We took a little naps right there, and uh, right there in the, on the front. And uh, I'd do it different if I had to do it again. But anyway, we were, I was walking back and forth, and uh, Psalm 27.4. And I, I don't know that I've ever had anything like this before, where the Word of God hit me. I wasn't reading it. It hit me. 
sovereignly, I wasn't looking at the passage. The concept came. And I remember I even had to look it up because I, I knew the verse, this one thing about beauty, but I didn't know, you know, Psalm or is it Isaiah. I, I remember that verse. That's a, that's a good one. That's a key one. And, uh, and I, I found it. And I carried it all day long and carried it and carried it and carried it and carried it. And it was the next morning. Never said it on the microphone, didn't talk about it because it was just a good feeling. It felt good just to, to do it, to carry it. When the Spirit's on something like that, it just feels good. Bob came to me the next day and he said, uh, the Lord says the answer is yes. And I'm thinking of the 21-day fast. I said, good, good. I said, excellent. I said, specifically yes to what? Because we prayed a lot of things yesterday. He said yes to uh, to the prayer he gave you. I go, oh. I go, which one did he give me? Because I prayed on the microphone, you know. Uh, oh, we're talking. Wait, let me get in context. We're talking 18 hours, no music. And I said, what what prayer? I asked Bob, w which one? Because all day long. He said, the one you didn't pray on the mic. I go, the one I didn't pray on the mic? I go, which one? He says, if I, t he always, he always said this. I mean, this was his common way. He goes, if I tell you the verse, will you believe the Lord gave it to me? I go, of course. He goes, Psalm 27, verse four. I went, oh my goodness, that one. I go, oh my. I go, I carried that all day. He goes, I know. The Lord put his hand on you. He goes, it was a sovereign thing. He's trying to talk to you. I said, whoa, what's, I go, I love it. I love that verse. And he said, he's, he's communicating to you. It was his hand upon you. Bob would hear the audible voice sometimes 10 and 12 times in one year. I mean, not every year, but, you know, it sounds like it's like every day. It's not every day, but, I mean, in 1983 and 1984 were clearly the intense years. For about an 18-month period, he gave us more in 18 months that we would, that we would wait on for 20 years till this season. It, it's like it's a pattern of Scripture. God downloads a ton of it real quick. Then there's a wilderness season for the Word to be tested, and then it comes to pass. Now, we've had things happen through the years, but nothing, nothing like the 18 months of... Uh, of uh, it went, uh, I would say, from March uh, 1983 to about September uh, 1984. Unbelievable. We're talking 15. Again, I don't know exact number. 12, 15 supernatural events, and then maybe another seven in the next 20 years. And the movement's not about me. The movement's not even about the 5,000. The movement's about the millions that come after the, that, that are behind the 5,000. That's what the movement's about. And that's what you guys all are about. And so that's just an important thing to uh, understand that. And he says, the Lord spoke to me audibly that he gave you Psalm 27, 4. And the Lord said, this is what, this is what it's about. 24 hour prayer, the spirit of the tabernacle of David. And I remember I go, I look at Psalm 20, I go, 24 hour prayer? How did you get that f from Psalm 27 4? He says, The Lord told me. That's where I got it. I go, That's not what Psalm 27 4 is about. It's about David. Well, I said, You know, David loves the Lord, you know. He goes, Do you know about David's ministry? And I said, Well, yeah, he's the king of Israel. He goes, No, about his, his, uh, his singers. Do you know he trained prophetic singers? I go, well, I've heard that, but I don't know much about it. He goes, do you know he had 4,000 musicians? I go, what did he do with them? <laughs> he said, "He said you don't even know what this is about, do you? And I said, well, yeah, David loved the Lord. He, I said, I know a little bit. I've heard it kind of coming and going. He said, God's going to raise up an army of musicians and singers. And they're going to gaze on the beauty of God. And he goes, in the middle of their praise, he goes, signs and wonders are going to break out. Miracles like you can't imagine. He said, the Lord said, I will set my face on this house when they do this. And because he said, 24-hour prayer in the spirit of the tabernacle of David. And I said, I remember I said, Bob, I'm not really thinking of having a 24-hour prayer meeting. I'm thinking of doing this to get revival. I don't want to be like in labor the rest of my life. And he said, no, it doesn't work that way. He goes, God's going to make it go 24-7. And he's going to do it all the days of your life. Oh, I mean, oh, 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 from now till the Lord returns. And the revival is going to break out. And he says, and the two are going to blend into one. And I go, the prayer meeting will be the right. Because I thought prayer meetings, you, you, ah, and then later you'd have the evangelistic meeting and then, 12 people get saved and there you have it he said no it's gonna it's gonna blend into one reality it will be one reality the prayer meetings will go in the stadiums and they'll get saved he goes he goes god's gonna give you a building 
and he's going to supernaturally set it up. And he goes, and he said this, he goes, the Lord told me there's not a, he says, here's what the Lord told me. There's not a prayer meeting in town where a young man can find deliverance. And I said, a prayer meeting? Why would they go to a prayer meeting to get deliverance? I mean, I'm thinking of intercessory prayer meeting. He says, God's going to raise up a prayer meeting of which the angels will appear. He said, healings will break out. The prophetic word will be so abundant, the angelic choirs. He goes, people will walk in and that flash of the Shekinah glory will hit their mind. Their minds will be cleared in one second and demons will be driven out. Nobody lay hands on them. In one uh, situation, the other situation, they will lay hands on them. He goes, one situation, nobody preaches, and they come rushing forward. The next one, there's a, there, 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 there's a season of preaching. He said, this is going to happen. It's going to be an open heaven over this building. He says, and God told me, he said, he told me this. There's not a place in Kansas, not a prayer meeting in Kansas City, a young man can get set free. But it's going to be the rule. It's going to be perpetual, and it will never come to an end. The freedom the people will walk into. The most demonized young man, bring him in the setting. And the demons, he said, it's like the white light, which is the Shekinah glory. He said, I saw the lightning white light hit their mind, and they were free within a second. No anything, instantly free in their spirit. He goes, that's what's going to happen in this house of prayer. And I said, wow. I said, I, I don't, still don't have a, a grid for it. I still think of the prayer meeting and then the evangelistic crusade. He goes, no, it, it will be the same, the exact same thing. Well, okay, you know, I'm in. And he said, that's what the Lord told you in Cairo, Egypt. He said, night and day prayer. I said, yeah, I, I was big on that, but I was thinking of it you know, night and day, you know, sort of a morning meeting, a noon meeting and a night meeting. I didn't think of night and day. He says, no, the Lord said night and day to you. I said, well, yeah, he did. I just didn't take it. I couldn't fathom this. And he says, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. I said, you know, I've been kind of been telling everybody there's a revival coming this summer. I was kind of hoping there would be one. (laughs) I've never done anything like this again. I mean, let's take it through. I hear Daniel 9. The comet is going to come as a sign. I mean, think about it. I hear Daniel 9. The angel Gabriel appears and gives me Daniel 9 a comet. Would you think revival was going to break out that summer? I mean, give me a break. <laughs> he says, but what's going to happen is a 24-hour prayer ministry is going to come out of this. We have fasting teams every day of the, every day of the year right now. They're not very anointed. It's not that great, but it's a whole lot different than 20 years ago. It's, it's, we're infancy, but it's happening, beloved. It is happening in a substantial way compared to all of our experiences, but it's not happening in a substantial way compared to where we're going. He says, you're going to live in a perpetual solemn assembly, perpetual, and you'll be in Arrowhead Stadium. He goes, it will birth all over the earth. He goes, that is what you're praying for, and that's what Daniel 9 is about. He goes, now we're not talking about a couple thousand people getting saved in Kansas City in 1983. We're talking about the world harvest and the birthing forth of the nation of Israel, and this kind of thing. He says, God's raising up things like this all around the earth, and he's going to use it all together to work in a way you don't even, he goes, you don't have a clue what's going on here, do you? And I says, if that's what's going on, I don't. He goes, you don't, you don't even know why you're here in this city, do you? And we had these truth talks, and I said, Bob, I'm trying to see a revival right now. That's all I know. I'm trying to see like a thousand people get saved this summer. That's my bottom line. And he looked at me. He says, you don't even, you don't need, you don't understand anything that's happening right now, do you? He goes, do you think Gabriel came to me and told me Daniel 9 to tell you so you could have a little outreach this summer? I said, I never thought about it. I just thought we were going to have outreaches this summer. I was thinking about announcing them, you know, figuring the park, getting a sound system. He goes, don't. Don't do any of that. Don't do any of that. He says, you just don't understand. And I said, well, I, I'm here at the prayer meeting. Let's do what we do, you know. I got to get back into the prayer room, you know. And we had this long talk. And I'm out there 24-7. Spirit of Tabernacle of David, what is that? No place where a young man can be delivered in a prayer room. Uh, You know, we never prayed for people in prayer rooms. We prayed for revival. We didn't pray for people. We prayed for revival. (laughs) Made a big sign. Made it real soon. Put it in in the prayer room. uh, 24-7, Spirit Tabernacle of David for 16 years. People came by and said, what's that? I go, I really, I, I don't know. 
singers, you know, stuff like that. And they said, like, well, what are the singers going to do? I said, I, I can't picture it, but I know what's going to happen. So now Harry comes in again, and he says, uh, uh, I had an angelic visitation. He goes, the Lord told me. I, I mean, the angel told me with his voice. He said, I saw him with my eyes. With my eyes, I saw him. I'm not talking about in my mind's eye. He told me when they get to 500, they will go to 5,000 overnight. That a great flood of the Spirit was going to come to Kansas City and that 5,000 would find a new home overnight in Kansas City. And he said, the angel looked at me and said, Mississippi will be the sign. And now here we are in this fast. You know, I've, I've said yes to Psalm 27, the house of prayer. I go, Mississippi? Because you kind of think angels never heard of Mississippi. I go, Mississippi? <laughs> they said Mississippi? He goes, yes. And there's a whole team of 15 of us. I go, what does that mean? He goes, I don't know. I go, you saw this with your eyes and heard it with your ears? He goes, yes. This was a real experience, not a mind's eye or not some little fuzzy little thing at the side there. I, I mean, to where a guy imagines he's seeing something. He goes, I'm talking about a full encounter with an angel. I said, what's going to happen in Mississippi? He goes, I don't know. He says, remember how I told you about the, the signs in the heavens and on the earth? He goes, well, the one was the weather pattern that came on the on first day of spring. The snow came when it was warm. He goes, the comet came. That's the second one. He goes, now this is one on the earth. He goes, he goes a flood is coming. A flood is coming, and it's going to be a sign that what I'm telling you is true. When you get to 500, you'll have 5,000 in one night. I go, 500 what? He goes, intercessors in the house of prayer. I go, what are they going to do? He goes, I don't know. He said, the Lord made it clear. He's going to send 5,000 like a flood. They'll get new homes in Kansas City overnight. We leave it there. The next day I say, Bobby, any more on Mississippi? He goes, no, I don't know what it means. Two days, three days, four days, five days. Suddenly, Bob brings the newspaper. He brings it in. Here it is. It says, flood strikes Jackson, Mississippi. 5,000 put in new homes overnight. I said, how did you know that was going to happen? He goes, I didn't know. He goes, five days ago, nobody knew this. He goes, it is a sign. Acts chapter 2, verse 17. The vision, 5,000 are coming to the house of prayer. The sign is a sign on the earth beneath. He said, these things are small compared to where they're going in the days to come, the level of signs. He goes, I go, Bob, this is stunning. I've never seen anything like this. I've seen three in a row in 1983. The snow, the comet. I go, how many more of these are going to happen? He goes, these are going to escalate. These are going to escalate in magnitude and importance far beyond anything I'm giving you right now. He goes, you wait and see. He goes, the company of prophets God's raising up will move in this realm far beyond this. And so I said, this is really going to happen. I said, so 5,000 intercessors. So I put the sign up and for, for 16 years, people said, what is that? It's 24 prayer of the spirit tower, Uncle David. And I said, not real sure. Has something to do with singers that I'm sure of. <laughs> and world revival, that's all I really know for sure in Psalm 27.4. And I've had a half a dozen people say that. That's not Psalm 27.4. I go, I understand. Take it up with Bob Jones. I said, don't even... I don't even want to go there. I am positive it's Psalm 27.4 now. I mean, it, now, years later, that is what Psalm 27.4 is all about. And, of course, when Bob came to visit IHOP uh, a year or two ago, I said, Bob, Psalm 27.4, you're right. He goes, I knew I was right then. <laughs> he goes, I heard it from the Lord. There was no guesswork to it. Okay, <clears throat> so that's the, the, the Mississippi thing. I'm going to skip the... The, the next one, three or four days later, the one where no disease known to man will stand before, I'm adding the terminology, these Joel 2 people. Because the Lord said, these people, and, and people have asked me for years, who are these people? But I, I know now it's the people that are saying yes to these four things the Lord has given us. Night and day prayer, holiness of heart, uh, uh, extravagant giving to the poor, and, and uh, operating in the activity of the Holy Spirit by faith, or the prophetic anointing, signs and wonders, all that kind of stuff. I'm going I'm to wait and give the, that one later. At the end of it, he gives the St. Louis partnership thing. I'll never forget May 27th, Friday night. I mean, we're in 20 days. And uh, people are really wrung out. And a lot of people are doing it on water. I mean, they're stretched out. They've been there all day. Bob gets up and he says, well, I got bad news and I got good news. He's saying this on the microphone. 
I mean, there's a momentum because I am thinking that revival is breaking out like Saturday, like on the 28th when it's over. I mean, when's the last time Gabriel visited and said something? I mean, a revival surely is, is a, that's a worthy thing to believe. I thought I was so wrong. Bob says, I got good news and I got bad news. He's on the microphone. And he went home and took a nap and the, the Lord visited him in a dream. He says, I got bad news and good news. And I'm going like, what? You know, we're all there. We got one more day. You know, I mean, here we are. It's over. And he said, the good news is this thing is going to touch the ends of the earth. I go, well, everything from there, if that's in place, I'm fine. He says, the bad news, it isn't going to happen for quite a while. I go, what do you mean? <laughs> he says, uh, he said, the Lord showed me. He said, there's a spiritual drought coming. He said, no, no, I, I'm not saying it right. He goes, there's a spiritual drought even in our midst and even coming. It's, it's here and coming. He says, the Lord is using it. The Lord is using, he's ordering the time frames. He's doing something far bigger than you understand. I said, okay, what are you saying here? He said, he said, God is going to show you his sovereignty in a way that is unmistakable unmistakable. The drought is not an accident. The drought isn't because uh, God isn't paying attention or God's not active or God's not zealous and jealous for his people. That's not the drought. He's using it strategically. I said, okay, I, 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 that works for me. I believe that very strongly. He said, uh, there's, a, there's a day, there's an appointed day, there's a day when God breaks in the drought. He breaks in the drought on a day. I said, that's right. He goes, we have those, those seasons through history called revivals. They're never a day late. He goes, we think they are, but they're not. He goes, the Lord's going to prove it to you. I said, how's that? He said, he's going to release another sign in the heavens. He goes, he wants you to believe. He cares about you right now because your heart will be hurt. I go, I am hurting right now. We're doing this kind of like uh, live, you know, with the whole group there, you know, and I'm going... Uh, like, what are you saying to me right now? You know, this is like bad news. Because his credibility was so stunning at this time because we're talking the comet really came on May 7th, like he said. The, the, the uh, Mississippi flood really came, like he said. The 5,000 really moved homes. I mean, the, the numbers were staggeringly accurate. He says there's a three-month drought. There's another sign of the heavens. My fourth one, he said, I'm giving you from the Lord. There's going to be a three-month drought in the Kansas City area in the natural and he goes, this drought in the natural will, will, be, will, will prove the vision I'm telling you. There's a drought in the spirit. And he goes, and to show you God's sovereignty, he's going to pick a day to break in on the drought. Here it is. He's saying this May 27th in front of 500 people. He says, on August 23rd, the Lord told me audibly, he'll break in on the drought on August 23rd. August 23rd? I go, where did you get that date? He goes, I heard it from, from the Lord directly. I said, August 23rd? He goes, yeah. He goes, and what's the point of that breaking in of rain on that day? To prove to you that God has the exact day he proves for break in. You won't be late. You are going to believe it's late, but it won't be one day late. He's on a mission for a global prayer movement, and he wants to use Kansas City in a significant way. Because, I mean, there's these, again, it could be said of, of maybe five or 10 or 20 different prayer centers in the earth, or a hundred, I don't know. You know, I mean, there's six billion people, a hundred is a small number. Uh, but I'm not saying only, but there's centers around the earth. And God's uh, orchestrating things to where they'll all converge together, this Holy Spirit convergence. And so uh, the drought comes in the summer of 1983. And it comes from, there was confusion about it. For a few years, because we didn't, uh, we were not careful with the details, and uh, the drought went from Jan July 1st to October 11th. It went three months and 11 days in terms of the in that three month period. I'll just call it a three month period. I mean, Bob's point wasn't exactly three months and one hour. It was a three month period. But a drought came, and that drought was the worst drought over that three month period, August 1st to say October 1st plus 11 days. Uh, that three-month period was the worst drought in recorded history of weather in Kansas City, except for one other year, was one-tenth of an inch less rain in that three-month period. Now, the reason there's confusion is because in June, 
there was uh, X amount of rain, and people always uh, put the June thing in there, but the three months was Ox- July 1st, October 1st. Bob didn't say that. He just had a three-month drought this summer. He didn't give the beginning and the end. And so uh, we find the dates by, by looking at it when it's over, and it is a three-month, 11-day drought that hit the one-hundredth of an inch less rain one time in recorded history of weather in that three-month period of Kansas City. Now, it wasn't a drought like the Sahara Desert, but it was a drought relative to 50 years in Kansas City it was. And, and so that happened. So here we are going through July. We're going through August. And uh, we gather on August 23rd. I said, Bob, is this the day? We're talking hot August 23rd. Not an ounce of, not a sign of rain. Not a sign. We're out there. We said, well, the prayer meetings were horrible by now. The fast ended May 27th, May 28th. June, July, oh, bad. I get a tumor on my vocal cords that I have for three years, a serious tumor. I mean, not a little one. I went to two doctors. Both of them been in the practice 30 years each. One of them said, if you don't get this tumor taken off in a, in a week, in 10 days max, you'll lose your vocal cords forever. I, went to, I said, I'm getting a second opinion. I went to another doctor on the other end of town. He said, uh, he said uh, am I your first opinion? I go, no. He looked at it and he said, uh, did the doctor give you one week or two weeks? I said, well, uh, actually one or two. He says, that he's a good doctor. He goes, you got one or two weeks. He goes, you're going to have permanent damage to your vocal cords. He goes, worse than that, this is a growing tumor. He says, it will obstruct your breathing. He says, you, you can die from this. He goes, I'm not playing a game. This is not a game. And uh, I said, huh. Well, that's an interesting answer for a 21 days in Gabriel and Comets to end up in June with a tumor. And my, my future is so linked to my vocal cords. And I, I can't imagine what Bob Sorge goes through. can't fathom what he goes through. It's been t- over 10 years. And so as some of you were around and you've heard tapes, and I did this thing on the microphone and couldn't talk all week long. Very, very similar. I could only talk two or three periods. I went to the prayer meeting zone and just went, in Jesus' name, did but we, the prayer meetings were down to seven or eight, totally oppressed. And I said, Lord, I am very, very confused right now. And Bob said, I told you. I told you on the day when the comet came. You didn't believe yet. You thought. I said, how could I not believe? Gabriel, the comet. The, he says, you don't understand. This is something far bigger than you understand. Far, far bigger. He says, the Lord, this is a sovereign thing. He says, this is going to be tested by God and the devil to the uttermost. This is a worldwide prayer movement. This is going to touch the birthing of, an inner, of a national conversion for the nation of Israel with other prayer movements. This is something God's raising up preemptive before a world war. He goes, do you think this is going to go untested by God or the devil? And I'm just looking at him. He goes, you still don't understand what you're doing. He says, you're leading a little church and wanting it to grow with a little bit of uh, evangelism. He goes, that's good, but that's not what's happening here. And so I'm all through the summer. Goes, the, the tumor lasts three years. The Lord, and I don't recommend this. I truly do not recommend this. The Lord told me so clear not to go to the doctor. He told me Genesis 22. He goes, you got a promise, Isaac. It is your vocal cords, and it's a visitation of God. Without vocal cords, your promises can't work. I, I have understanding to some degree what Bob Sorge's facing. And I said, oh, oh, this is a tough thing. And I said, if my wife, if Diane agrees, I don't care who says, and she said, I feel strong, no surgery. So I thought it would lift in a week, a month, two months, one year, two years, and three years, and then it lifted. It was healed in, in June 1986. And still, even to this day, I walk with a limp on that. Just if I get stretched out physically, just a little bit tired, the first thing that hits is always my vocal cords. Whenever something's happening, that's the place of attack. It hits there first before anything. So it's kind of like the, the limp that I continually walk with. Anything right or left, boom, it hits the vocal cords. I go, ah, oh. I go, Lord, you said you would strengthen me. How about my vocal cords? And it's, it's so the Lord, it was a sovereign Genesis 22 thing. Isaac's on the aisle. I said, Lord, all this is for naught in my experience if I lose my voice. And, and Bob says, you're right. It is for naught. But if the Lord is in this. And so that's a victory story. Every story had a victory, but that was a. So I, I'm giving you a feeling for June, July, and August. Despair. Five in the prayer meetings. The crowds have gone. 
tumor, prayer meetings, five people, three people, nothing. We're plowing day after day. And so we gather August 23rd. It's a Tuesday night. We gather. It's at noon. I said, it doesn't look good. <laughs> it doesn't look good. Six o'clock at night because we got a seven o'clock meeting to celebrate it because we called the meeting and we're going to celebrate it because we believed it because so many things for this would be the fourth sign in, in the natural in a row. I mean, in, in six months, four times a vision, then a sign. And, I, you know, and again, it's happened a couple more times in 84, maybe once or twice since then. And that's kind of been it because it really was in that intensify that intensive area. I mean, uh, time frame. We gathered six o'clock and I mean, s- seven o'clock, a downpour came. I, I mean, t- in my frame of reference, it just came out of nowhere. I mean, maybe, maybe the clouds were brewing for an hour. I don't know. But uh, I, was, I was standing out there. It was a downpour. It might only last 20, 30, 40 minutes. The, the, uh, the, uh, uh, at the end of it, it was only uh, uh, a third of an inch of rain. But I'm telling you, it came down in 17 minutes, all one third of an inch. I don't really know that number. We were out there. It rained so hard because the meeting was at 7. People couldn't, get, couldn't come and go. And everybody was in their cars. It was raining so hard. They stayed in their cars for 10 or 15 minutes. And we were so excited. It's real. It's real. It's real. And so we gather and we're happy. And I'm leading the meeting. It's real, you guys. It's real. Like this thing was really right. And I'm going to be healed, you agency. <clears throat> it, that, that, I really did that. that that's funny now. But it, was, it, was, it is funny now. But it was uh, bizarre then. Okay, so then. We're, I mean, for the rest of the week, our prayer meetings are full at nights. I mean, we break the 10 every night. We have 15. I mean, record-breaking crowds. Everybody's excited again. A couple of nights we hit 20. But that's exciting. I mean, there was feeling, you know. I think I let a few singers in, but I, we went for it. Bob Jones came. He said, I told you, the August 23rd. Back on May 27th, in front of all of you, 500 of you, I told you there was no guesswork. I'm telling you, the drought in the spirit in this nation, not just Kansas City, in America will break. There is a day and an hour, and God will not be one minute short. I mean, one minute late. Not one minute. And then it was, it was the two years later, remember the World Series. He says, the message is going to be, they, they've counted Kansas City out. They've lost it, and at the 11th hour, God's going to break in, and suddenly there's victory at the last second. And then again, the 11. He told us that, and then the next day it's 11, you know, and just the whole, uh, the way the whole drama of that happened. Okay, so it's September. It's October. It's going okay. My voice is, is bad, as horrible as ever. It's November. We're still going every night, 7 to 10, praying for revival, praying for the things God said in, in May, uh, May 83. Now it's November 83, and uh, my, my ranks are, are really down. They're discouraged again. Bob calls me up on the phone on, on November 7th. I remember this so clear. He says, Mike, he says, it's been a while since the Lord's spoken to me. He goes, it really has been. I don't know what happened. It's kind of like something's wrong. He says, but I know it's not. I know it's not. He said he's establishing something. He told me he's going to visit you on November 15th. It's November 7th. I go, really? I mean, really? He goes, yes. He says, uh, I heard it direct from the Lord. But he said, it's for sure. He said, you're going to get a revelation. Here's what he said. Direct from the throne of God. Direct from the throne of God. He says, about the movement in Kansas City and its worldwide dimensions. I go, direct? I says, do you mean as though either I'm going up or someone's coming down direct? He goes, yes. I go, Bob, don't play with me right now. I'm really discouraged, and my voice is really bad, and everything is dying, and I was so excited six months ago, and I am really at the edge. He says, I promise you, this is from God. November 15th, you will go up or somebody will come down. I said, I can count on this. He goes, I'll, I'll bet my entire ministry on it. He goes, there's no guesswork. November 15th. I got it. There's no, no. Okay, good. Good. Okay. I'm in. I love it. I'm, uh, the revival's on. <laughs> oh, I was so excited. The, the feeling of it was exciting. Even if it didn't happen, it was exciting for seven days. They get a mic. But remember, we've had four signs in, 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 in the created order. I mean, in the natural realm is what I'm trying to say. Four of them. 
the, the, the snow thing, the comet, the, you know, the four. And so uh, here it is, November 15th. I am so excited. I, I'm there. We have the 7 to 10 prayer meeting. Nothing's happened. It's 10 o'clock at night. It's, nothing's happened yet. And the prayer meeting, again, we're record-breaking. We're, we're, we've shattered the 20 mark that night because everybody heard about that word, and they all came from everywhere. And uh, I, I really mean that. I, I go to IHOP, and sometimes, you know, in the early morning, there'll be 10 or 12. I go in 10 or 12. I go, are you kidding me? For so many years, we would have taken pictures and put this in the newsletter. <laughs> 12 humans there. Are you kidding? We never had 12 unless there, there was a guest speaker or a rumor of a guest speaker, you know, coming in. Leonard Ravenhill came once and we had 50, you know, and, and so uh, it's 10 o'clock and I go, huh, nothing's happened. Well, it's, you know, Bob's got this thing about God being the 11th hour, so I'm going to wait. So it's, uh, it's now 11. I'm sitting in my office. Huh. This doesn't work. I'm gonna, my heart's going to be hurt because I'm hurting anyway. Because just picture the whole last six months in that summer. And uh, there's a few other things you, just, just, you can't, I don't want to take time to put into it. It was heavy. So I'm sitting there going through my mail. And uh, 11 o'clock, I got a little stack of mail. And I'm going to wait till 12 anyway and go home. And, and I'm giving up. I'm definitely giving up. Just so you know, I'm going, this is, Bob missed it. I don't know how he could be that bold and be this wrong about something that big i mean i was troubled by him how could he do this and i'm looking through my mail and i get this little book called placebo 50 pages howard Pittman. this lady writes a note somewhere on the middle of kansas she was dear mike the holy spirit told me to send this to you uh it's a man who had a death experience 11 o'clock well, I might as well read it. It's 50 pages. So I read it. It says, my name is Howard Pittman. I was a police officer on August 1979. I had a hemorrhage in my uh, abdomen, and I bled to death and died. Sound like Bob Jones. I said, that's interesting. He goes, I it was a Baptist pastor for 35 years. I did orphan street preaching. He goes, I don't believe in signs and wonders. I've been a conservative Baptist pastor on the weekends, little churches down in Louisiana, and a police officer. And I've done them both for 35 years, some, or 30, 35 years. He says, he says, suddenly there's a hemorrhage. I bleed to death. They rush me to the hospital. They lose me. My spirit leaves my body. I go to the presence of God. An angel, I am dead. It is over. And I ask the Lord, can I have my life back? And, no, and the angel, nobody will answer me. And I see this, I see that. I stand before the very gates of the eternal city. And I ask the Lord, can I have my life back? And the Lord still doesn't answer me because I've asked this. I got to know him quite well. He goes, I asked the question over and over. He goes, I was gone for a long time. For, he, goes, he goes, I was there for a long time, you know, not 10 minutes. He said, somewhere for a day or two, I assume. Uh, but you never know what a brainwave is. And if your spirit's there, how that works. And so he says, I'm standing there, and the Lord, uh, and, and a bunch of incredible things happen. And the Lord tells him, he announces over the wall of the city. He goes, I'm not in the, I don't see the Lord. I'm outside the walls. And he goes, and I hear the Lord's voice. He goes, I'm, yes, I'm sending you back. And I'm given a very abbreviated, very abbreviated, because it's a very dynamic story. And we had him in a number of times, a guest speaker, and I got to know him well, and really interviewed him in depth. And he said this, <clears throat> uh, I'm reading this, and it's part what I'm reading and part what he fills in the blanks in our friendship. And, uh, uh, but he told all of us, so it wasn't like a private tell. He told many of us these things. So I, had it, I interviewed him in front of everybody a half a dozen times. So the Lord says over the wall, he says, I, I'm going to give you your life back. You're going back, but I want you to tell them this. This is the Laodicean hour, and my son is returning within one generation. Howard Pittman says, I'm a 55-year-old conservative Baptist pastor. I, I can't fathom what I'm, what's happening to me. He goes, tell them, this is the Laodicean hour, and my son is coming back this generation, within a generation. He says, number one, I, I don't know the exact order. Number two, tell them, the devil is a personal devil, not just an evil influence. Number three, Tell them I'm raising up a church across the earth that will do signs and wonders that will surpass even my servant Elijah. 
And Howard Pittman said, he goes, I could not help the thought process. I said, Lord, signs and wonders have passed away. He goes, I didn't say it with my mouth. I said it with my mind. And the Lord says, you are greatly mistaken. He goes, tell them greater works than these they will do in my name. And they will do miracles greater than Elijah. This is August. Now catch this. August 1979, the experience. He writes the book a few months after that. So he writes it in 79 sometime, whenever. I'm in 83. I'm, I'm three, four years later, right? We're May 7th, 1983, three years after him. He said, the Lord told me that he was going to send me back to encourage a little band of Gideons. Our very first meeting, something broke in, and we, the Holy Spirit took over the service before December 5th, 1982 was our first meeting, but this was the home, and the Gideon thing came out. Everybody was weeping, and the da 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 I thought it was, I said, one of the best meetings I've ever been in in terms of the spirit moving in this way. And we thought every meeting would be that way. He says, go tell, he says, I'm sending you back to go strengthen a small group of Gideons. Now listen to this. That's one. I'm reading this. I'm reading it. Uh, some of it is word for word. Like, I mean, very direct this. Some of it is the discussion, but I interviewed him. And uh, <clears throat> so Gideons, I'm reading that. He says, tell them that this band of Gideons the significant date is May 7th, 1983. This is in 79. 1983. He writes it in 79. He writes, in May 7th, 1983 is the big day. That's the day our solemn assembly called and the sign of the heaven comes. Tell them there will be a sign I will send across the heavens on that day. I am reading this and tell them, here's the drought. Though there be a delay, I will surely keep every promise. <laughs> and I read that, I will keep every promise, though there be a delay. And I looked up at the clock and it was five till 12. And Bob told me, he goes on November 15th, this is on November 7th. He goes, when you have this encounter from the throne of God, he says, you will know from now to the end. He told me this. I can't remember if I mentioned it, but I said it on all the other tapes. He said, you will never doubt after November 15th ever again. And I said, Bob, how could this be? And that's why I was so upset at 11. He said, you will never doubt after November 15th. He says, the Lord told me directly either the Lord or an angel, somehow, but from heaven. He goes, I don't have any idea. And I called Bob Jones, and I said, Bob, you're not going to believe it. He said, I absolutely will believe it. The Lord told me directly. He goes, what happened? I told him the story. He says, Mike, be assured this. Though the drought is here, though the delay will come, Though God has appointed a sovereign day, like he did August 23rd, he proved to you, he will break the drought in this nation and he will keep his word to this little group of Gideons who on May 7th, with a sign of the heavens, have gathered before me. Let's just stand before the Lord for a minute. We're going to end with this.